welcome back to the 2023 Bracketology predictions and let's get right into it heading into conference championship week where we've got number one overall seed Alabama here. I think that Alabama may not be the best team but we'll see what happens. They've kind of struggled down the stretch here as Brandon Miller has simply regressed as a three-point shooter. A lot of people say it's because of all the controversy surrounding this team. I don't really see it like that but I do have Alabama at number one overall just by virtue of their head-to-head -head win at Houston earlier this season. Number eight, Northwestern has had a solid Big Ten slate. They're at the two seed in the Big Ten tournament, so we'll see what happens there. And then number nine seed, NC State. is at the six seed in the ACC tournament. Had a pretty solid ACC slate. They would play Clemson if they can win their first game. So they have a path to make it to the semifinal perhaps improve their seed here to maybe the eight or seven line if they can make the semifinal at least or the final number five seed iowa state has been struggling down the stretch has recently lost caleb grew but in their last game of the season they blew out baylor in a shocking game on the road to maintain this five seed for them i really thought i was gonna have to drop them earlier they were kind of turning into an oklahoma of a couple years ago just losing all of their games down the stretch but now I see them in a pretty good place. We'll see what they can do in the Big 12 tournament. Number four, Indiana had a great game against Michigan to end off their regular season and won that one. And they have the season sweep over Purdue. They're looking good at the three seed in the Big 10 tournament. For those predictions, please click in the top right to watch them. Number six seed, Duke just finished off their season sweep of North Carolina. They move on to the ACC tournament where they will receive that double bye as a top four seed. So we'll see if they can try and move into the top five lines, which is really the money position here in March Madness. Number three seed, UConn is a trendy pick in the Big East, even though they aren't up to par. They're about the four seed. They'll play Providence, who we'll get to in a moment in the first round. They had that great out of conference slate. Sonogo and Co. I think can lead this team in March. I like them at the three seed here. Just a quick shout out to Charleston, who we had to replace one seed Towson with. So now we have some of these auto bids locked up. So I can start talking about this team. Charleston is not locked up yet, but we'll see how they do in the CAA tournament. Number seven seed Maryland had a really head scratching loss at Ohio State and at Penn State to end their season. They are really not on the great foot right now, but we'll see how they can respond in the Big Ten tournament. And then number 10 seed, Providence got off to an interesting end of their season. They did not play great in their past two games. A lot of question marks about this team. I dropped them down to the 10 seed as a result. Then number two seed, Kansas State has been great down the stretch here in the Big 12. They earned a top four seed in that tournament, so we'll see how they can do there. Moving on to the Midwest region, we've got number one, Houston just finished off the season sweep of Memphis, the only other American team in the bracket. We'll see them later. Houston's very solid all around. The computers love them, but they don't have the marquee wins to get them the number one overall seed. I could see Kansas jumping them, even if Alabama does not win the SEC tournament. Number eight seed, Missouri has had a solid SEC slate, but a lot of people have them further up, and I don't because... You know, the metrics don't really like Missouri here. They've won a lot of close games, so we'll see what happens with them. Then Iowa has wrapped up a pretty good season here in the Big Ten, and we'll see what they can do in that tournament. Number five seed St. Mary's will be in the final of the WCC tournament. We'll see if they can improve their seed. You see St. Mary's will play Gonzaga in that one, and that is a marquee game. Won't really hurt either team if they lose, but has the chance to improve the seed there, so that's great for the conference either way. Then Tennessee at the four seed. Again, they don't have Ziegler, just suffered a loss in the last Saturday of the season against Auburn, but they did beat Arkansas at home in the game that they did lose Ziegler, so we'll see how they can meld and mesh in the SEC tournament to try and cope with that. Number six seed, San Diego State, looks forward to the Mountain West tournament for them there after they lost to Boise State in the past week. West Virginia at the 11 seed is very much a bubble team here. Won three of their past four, including that one against K-State at home this past Saturday. So West Virginia is looking good, but they probably need to win one at least in the Big 12 tournament to be securely in the field. 
Gonzaga, as I already mentioned, has cruised through the WCC tournament and will play St. Mary's in the final there. Then seven seed Creighton had an up and down end to their season in the Big East, but I think that they have a pretty good seed at three in the Big East tournament, so we'll see what happens there. Number 10 seed Utah State got a much needed win over Boise State. They've been rolling and they probably need to advance at least two rounds in the Mountain West as they are very much a bubble team, but we'll see what happens there. And then Texas beat Kansas at home, a dominant defensive performance. Congratulations to them for that. They are a solid two seed because of it just ahead of other two seed K-State that you see on the other side. So now let's get into the bottom of the bracket where we've got number four overall seed Purdue. Again, had a little rough end of the season, but they've made a couple changes at guard in their starting lineup, favoring defense a little more as some of their shooters started to get a little cold down the stretch. So we'll see how they can come up with that. They are the one seed in the Big Ten, so we'll see what happens there. Then number eight seed, Memphis, as I mentioned, just lost a heartbreaker against Houston. Doesn't hurt their seed too much. In fact, I just kept them put at the eight. Number nine seed, USC, finished off the season with a win over ASU, but lost to Arizona last week, so they stay at the nine seed. They will rematch ASU if they can win. ASU is a bubble team we'll get into later. Number five seed, Kentucky has gotten off to a great end of the season, just one at Arkansas to finish off their season there. I think they have a great prospect at the three seed in the SEC tournament. Xavier at the four seed is an interesting team here because they will not be getting back the free mantle. So we'll see what they can do. I like their prospects still, but it's a little more bleak without him. They've been better, but we'll see how they can do in the Big East tournament. Number six seed at Michigan State is a team that I really like the prospects of right now. They had a pretty good end of the season, including that marquee win against Indiana at home, and I think they, they can do pretty good in the Big Ten tournament. Number 11 seed, Nevada, is not on the same page, getting dealt two horrendous losses in Mountain West play. They probably need to make the Mountain West championship, and that can be their only loss if they want to make the tournament, because quite frankly, most of the losses in the Mountain West are going to be pretty damaging, besides maybe SDSU. Number three seed, Baylor. Again, had that head scratching loss to Iowa State, but overall, I think their prospects are fine. They can rise up to the two or maybe even one lines if they can win a loaded Big 12 tournament. Number seven seed, Miami. Finished up a regular season one seed in the ACC. They are the best seven seed here. I could easily see them at a six. We'll see what they can do with that one seed after they just beat Pitt who is a bubble team that I have right now. So we'll see how they can do as one of the favorites in the ACC tournament. Number two, UCLA finished off their season with the sweep of the Arizona schools there, including that marquee win against Arizona. We'll see Arizona a little later. UCLA will be the one seed in the Pac-12 championship. East, number one seed, Kansas will also be the one seed in their Big 12 tournament. They really played badly in that loss at Texas, but I think that they can bounce back at least for a couple rounds in this Big 12 tournament. We'll see if they can win it outright. If they do, I think they can be the number one overall seed and play in that Midwest division as they really want to. Number eight seed, Arkansas, just lost to Kentucky at home. I think they need to bounce back as the 10 seed in the SEC tournament where they will play seven seed Auburn. Number nine seed, Illinois has had an up and down end of their season, lost at Ohio State and then at Purdue uh, over the past couple of weeks. They did grab a win against Michigan in a close one at home, but I think it's very much up and down. Illinois really needs a good game against Penn State to start out their Big 10 tournament to stay off the bubble here. The five seed, Texas A&M moves up after that massive win at home against SEC leading Alabama. They have the two seed in the SEC tournament and they are not to be messed with. A lot of people might not see them as such as their rise in with only two losses in SEC play has been astounding. But they, they, let me remind you that this was a preseason top 25 team before a couple early season losses. So we'll see what happens there. Virginia was locked into the two seed in the ACC the whole time, had a couple cupcakes down the stretch there. We'll see how they can do at the two seed in the ACC tournament. TCU just finally getting healthy with Mike Miles back, and they were dealt a loss at Oklahoma. Tough place to play, but 
their best players did not really play well in that matchup. We'll see how they can respond as they are the six seed in the Big 12 tournament as well. And they are the six seed in March Madness. That's kind of crazy to think about here. Then number three seed, Arizona, as I just mentioned, lost to UCLA. But I think their prospects are pretty good going into the Pac-12 championship. They also beat USC last week, so they stay at the three line. I think they can move up to the two. They at least make the tournament final there. Then number seven seed, Auburn just got that massive win against Tennessee to bring them up to the seven line. But if they lose early in this SEC tournament, they play the Hogs first, they could go right back to the bubble. That's how tenuous it is right now. They are one of the worst seven seeds I see here. And we'll see what happens in that one. Number 10 seed, Boise State. Again, lost to Utah State late in Mountain West play, but they probably need to win a couple games in this Mountain West tournament, if not win it outright again to stay off the bowl. Because again, that field in that tournament is pretty weak overall. Number two seed Marquette finished up a Big East regular season championship. They play great basketball, Tyler Golek and Co. I expect them to do great things. I have them at the two seed here, but we'll see what happens in that Big East tournament. Finally, what you've all been waiting for, the bubble picture, our last four in Michigan, Oklahoma State, Penn State, and Mississippi State. Michigan just lost two in a row on the road in brutal fashion, four-point loss to Illinois, and that brutal overtime loss against Indiana. I mean, that is factoring in that they just beat Wisconsin at home the other week, but Michigan very much in a playing game against Rutgers in that first round of the Big Ten tournament. Oklahoma State, Finished off the season with a win at Texas Tech in a very close one. What many considered a playing game before that. They had lost five straight, very much a streaky Oklahoma State team. And before those five straight losses, they had five straight wins. So maybe this could be the start of a little run for them. They'll rematch Oklahoma in the third Bedlam game. They've swept that season series so far. Oklahoma's the 10th seed. We'll see what happens in that one. Very much a playing game for Oklahoma State there. 11 seed Penn State got an up and down end to the season there, and we'll see what happens for them in the Big Ten tournament where they will be playing Illinois first. Mississippi State had a pretty good end of the season but lost at Vanderbilt to cap everything off. They do have that home win against top 25 Texas A&M, which was marquee for them in their tournament hopes, but that loss to Vanderbilt could hurt them because Vanderbilt is starting to emerge you don't see them on these graphics here, but if Vanderbilt gets a couple wins, then we'll see what happens. They will have that head-to-head -head tiebreaker down the stretch in March, but Mississippi State needs to focus on Florida, their first opponent in the SEC championship. Wisconsin, as I mentioned, just got the win over Minnesota, but they need to put together some wins in March of Madness. They don't really have many bad losses. Almost had one there at Minnesota. But I think they can regress to the mean. They've lost a lot of close games, have played a brutal strength of schedule. So we'll see what can happen for the Badgers. Rutgers, I already mentioned, had a up and down end of the season, but they play Michigan in what is a pseudo playing game. Rutgers is on the first four out for now. Michigan's on the last four in. You could see that either way. I see it like that for now. North Carolina is a very interesting case here. Lost to Duke for the second time this season, only as the one quad one win. I think they probably need to get to either the semifinal, beating Virginia, and then maybe Clemson even in the semifinal and make it to the ACC final to make it into the NCAA tournament at large. I think that first Virginia game, which would constitute two wins in the ACC tournament, should be enough for them, but we'll see. I think they will get the benefit of that out for them committee just because they got to the final four last year under seeded as well. Arizona State just lost to both USC and UCLA. They play Oregon State in the first round of the Pac-12 tournament, so we'll see what they can do there. Then they play USC if they can win that. They probably need to win both of those. Then they can finally afford a loss to Arizona. Then I think they'll be in, but they might need to win that game against Arizona as well. We'll see what happens there. Oregon has a buy in the Pac-12 championship, unlike Arizona State. They'll play the winner of the Washington State game. They're hoping to play Washington State and avenge a late season loss. If they win that, they'll probably play UCLA at the one seed. They probably need to win both of those to get in, though. So it's going to be a tough path for Oregon. Pittsburgh is a little undermanned here. I think that they're really in the first four out, but I see them as such. Uh, I think that it won't be very hard maybe win a game in the ACC tournament and then they'll be in. 
For Texas Tech, it's going to be a lot harder after that aforementioned loss to Oklahoma State on the last day of the regular season. They'll have to win at least two to three, maybe even the Big 12 championship all out. Maybe a loss in the championship will do it for them, but we'll see what happens. And then Clemson, again, sitting at the three seed, they definitely need to go at least two rounds. They can hope to play NC State in a quad one game in the third round, and then they hope to play either North Carolina or Virginia and then beat that team and make it to the ACC championship. That's how I see Clemson making it to the field. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe and comment your bracketology predictions below.